Disney is about to disrespect another part of our childhood with another live-action remake. The Little Mermaid is releasing soon, another uninspired live-action film that hopes to lure people into theaters with the help of nostalgia. However, it seems that the majority of people aren't too keen on it. The official trailer sits at 300,000 likes and 2 million dislikes. That is extremely bad. Especially when compared to the official Aladdin trailer, which sits at over 700,000 likes and only 40,000 dislikes. Of course likes on the trailer don't have to say anything about the quality of the movie, but they do show people's initial reactions. And people are the ones who mostly go to the cinema based on the trailer or not. Aladdin has managed to bring in just over 1 billion dollars and has become a huge success. It is assumed that The Little Mermaid will not even come close to this. Looking at the mostly negative reactions from people, it's not hard to see why. A race swapped Ariel, but she has a white father and her sisters in turn have all sorts of races and skin colors. I don't want to accuse her father of anything, but you could get the idea that he has fun with a lot of women. So even if this is questionable and doesn't match the situation in the original film, Disney's bigger focus is to tick all the diversity boxes and be truly on top of their virtue signaling game. However, looking at Ariel's friends and the other animals, I really wonder which child is supposed to like the live-action version more than the original. Flounder and Sebastian look much worse. And also the underwater world looks horribly empty and desolate, dark and colorless. A far cry from the beautiful underwater world the original classic presented. And not only were songs from the original changed because Disney found the original version too offensive for modern audiences, the film is also supposed to give the original film a feminist twist and no longer be about Ariel's love for a man. This CBR article writes what Hayley Bailey, the actress who plays Ariel, had to say about the film. She says, and I quote, It's way bigger than that. It's about herself, her purpose, her freedom, her life and what she wants. As women, we are amazing. We are independent. We are modern. We are everything and above. And I'm glad that Disney is updating some of these themes. End of quote. So the movie is no longer about love, a romantic relationship and the willingness to risk one's own life for that of another person. No. Now it's about something much bigger. Namely, about herself. That sounds pretty narcissistic. But hey. The main thing is that they update it for modern times and modern audiences, right? That's great marketing. It probably makes everyone excited to watch the movie. In the last few years Disney has relied heavily on these remakes, even though they weren't good in most cases. A great example is the latest Peter Pan and Wendy movie with the race swap Tinkerbell, which turned out absolutely horribly and no one is talking about it anymore. Even the woke mainstream critics weren't able to save it. But Disney seems to have to rely on nostalgia these days in order to attract people to their movies at all. Because in the last years, Disney seems to have forgotten how to make good movies. It's looking bad for all their franchises. In the animation area, it looks especially bad. Sequels to popular films have been significantly worse than their predecessors. The Incredibles 2 ended up being a huge disappointment. And that's even though they took a decent amount of time to make the movie. 14 years and it still was pretty bad. Another example is Wreck-It Ralph 2. Just like with The Incredibles, I really liked the first part. One of my favorite animated movies. About a video game villain who doesn't want to be the bad guy anymore and then moves on to other games where he can be one of the good guys on the winning side and get love and recognition. Very underrated. And then the second part comes along and goes in a completely different direction. Instead of video games, it's about social media and how he wants to become an influencer on YouTube and TikTok. It's a stupid idea from the start, and it's absolutely unfunny. Or the most unnecessary sequel of all, Toy Story 4, when Disney decided to unnecessarily continue a great completed trilogy. Not quite a bad movie per se, but much worse than the first three, and it ruined what I thought was a perfect ending from the third part. And now they want to go on and on and have already announced a fifth part. Besides that, they have also released a prequel with Lightyear. A movie that flopped massively and on which Disney made several hundred million dollars in losses. So maybe they should rethink that with Toy Story 5. But sequels and remakes seem to be the only films with which Disney sometimes still has some success. Even if that is becoming less and less. But their original films are currently losing money and the quality is not what it used to be. 
Turning Red is one of the only ones released recently. A film that hardly anyone has seen, and those who have seen it, largely didn't like it. And Disney has the same problems with Strange World, a movie that was heavily marketed as having a gay main character. Well, and if you look at how little it has grossed, families didn't seem to be very interested in it. The film cost up to 180 million just for production, which would mean that with marketing and the share of revenue that theaters keep, the film would have had to bring in about 500 million just to cover its costs. With its result of only 73 million, it didn't even come close to doing that. It shows that if the movies disappoint again and again, and the studios instead of quality put more emphasis on pushing their political agendas into the movie, people will stop watching these movies in the long run. Disney has also experienced this with their Star Wars films. When Star Wars 7 The Force Awakens was released in 2015, it had massive hype. Understandably, at that point Disney was still fine and it was the first time in 10 years that the Star Wars movie hit theaters again. Even though the movie was just a copy of the plot of Star Wars 4, the movie was overall okay. Not very good, but not very bad either. It was definitely a huge success and it even grossed over 2 billion, thus one of the most successful films of all time. Episode 8 and 9, however, were significantly worse films. They ruined the lore of the franchise, a multitude of plot holes, and turned Rey into a Mary Sue who is extremely overpowered and gifted in all areas, accomplishes things no one else is capable of. Episodes 8 and 9 were terrible and franchise ruining movies, and that was reflected in the success. While part 7 reached over 2 billion, the 8th part dropped about 30% down to 1.3 billion. And the 9th part has grossed less again with just over 1 billion, about half of what episode 7 had achieved. And that's pretty pathetic for the final part of the Star Wars franchise. But the film and its predecessor were also both pathetic. And instead of Disney learning from their mistakes and realizing that no one likes the sequel trilogy, these characters and this era of Star Wars, they stubbornly do the opposite and double down on it, announcing that they are working on a sequel to Star Wars 9, starring once again the most hated Star Wars character, Rey. They also announced that the film will be made by Charmin Obai Chinoy, a feminist activist who has only done a few small documentaries on women's rights and a few episodes of Ms. Marvel. And with Ms. Marvel we come to Marvel, which has also lost a lot of popularity in recent years under Disney's direction. Once a box office powerhouse, dominating everything, now their movies have lost a massive amount of popularity after Avengers Endgame. It's no secret that the movies have become much more political and they now all, with the exception of Spider-Man No Way Home, which was pretty good and successful. Aside from that, all their projects either disappointed at the box office or even flopped and lost money. The MCU has never experienced that. It always went uphill, until it was even to the point that the box office of 1 billion was the standard. And now they release one bad movie after another. And that's not even mentioning their series, where the situation is perhaps even worse than with their films. Disney Plus is also struggling, because not only are losses showing with their movies, but also with their streaming service. Because in the first three months of 2023, Disney Plus has lost over 4 million subscribers. And this despite the release of Mandalorian Season 3 and the introduction of a cheaper subscription tiers. Disney Plus already lost over 2 million in the last quarter of 2022, and now another 4 million. It's an understatement to say that they're struggling. And that on a lot of fronts. Will Disney ever be the company again it once was? The company that stayed away from politics and released one good movie after another? I don't think so. I think those days are over. And that's a shame, because I was once a big fan of their movies. But as they are now, I would even rather see them fail than succeed with their lazy garbage. But what do you think about it? Feel free to write in the comments, I'll read them all. And please support me with a like on the video and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. Thank you very much and I'll see you next time. Take care.